من الناس من يشتري لهو الحديث ليضل عن سبيل الله بغير علم ليضل عن سبيل الله بغير علم ويتخذها هزوا أولئك لهم عذاب مهين وإذا تتلى عليه آياتنا ولا مستكبرا كأن لم يسمعها كأن في أذنيه وقرا فبشر Everybody likes music. Everybody enjoys music. Everybody enjoys singing and dancing and being cheerful. So why would someone say it's haram? It's very simple. To know the ruling on, over something, we have to go back to the Quran and Muslim. We are Muslims. We have to go back to the Quran and to the Sunnah. Do we get our religion from out of the Quran and Sunnah? No. If you go to the Sunnah, the most authentic book for Muslims, any Muslim Sunni, you would ask him, you would say Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the most authentic book on earth after the Quran. And in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet والسلام, tells us that there will be people of my ummah making haram things halal. And they would make uh, uh, adultery, fornication. They would make silk. They would make consuming intoxicants, khamr. And music instruments halal. Four things. The Prophet ﷺ told us that there will come people who would make these haram things halal. So the Prophet is the one who told us that music is haram. And the evidence behind it is overwhelming. There is no scholar on earth, Muslim scholar, that allows you to listen to Beyonce and Madonna and Michael Jackson and those. That is completely out because number one, it's dirty, it's filthy. The lyrics are horrible, terrible. They encourage you to move your body and to shake your thing, as they say. May Allah forgive us, really. They move, you move your body, you are sexually hyped up. So it's a dirty industry. Ask those who are in it. It's filthy. When you hear about music, you hear about how to attract the opposite sex. And it's all about love and all about, you know, your emotions. And so at home, you're not happy when you go to work. You see someone you're working with and you're busy thinking, oh, the music fits exactly here and so on. Things are happening. People are tampering with our minds. The power that music has on humans mind has been well documented for thousands of years. Hundreds of scientific studies have proven that music can have a profound effect on human emotions, sensory perceptions and behavior. In 1839, Heinrich Wilhelm Dolph made a fascinating audio discovery when he uncovered this strange phenomenon of binaural beats, which are special frequencies within music that affect how brain waves behave and consequently our mood. A more recent study in 2012 by psychologist Annette Shermer uncovered that our perception of the external world can be directly affected by musical rhythm because our brain waves become in sync with auditory beats. What's most intriguing about this study is that Shermer realized that when people move in synchrony, they are more likely to perceive the world in synchrony. This means that our mental process can be altered simply by using music to manipulate brainwave oscillations. Music touches the limbic system or the emotional system of our brain, which actually, though slower than other parts, can overwhelm all of the other parts. Um, think about how we lose our mind when we fall in love, um, and we literally do because of the power of, of the emotion. Um, that being said, the music system is has been very unresponsive even to industry applied ratings. All that they had been willing to do was to put parental advisory on the outside of CDs. They would not print lyrics in a visible place. 
Um, this is complicated by the fact that the Federal Communication Commission has strict limits on what can be broadcast over the air. And historically, the way popular music has been sold is through airplay. We can't expect a system to be put together that will perfectly protect us. Um, we need to protect ourselves. We need to be aware that these media change us and affect us. Um, and we need to actively understand what they're doing, how they're doing, and make choices of whether we want that to be done to us. I think nowadays music is probably one of the easiest means to lose your moral sense. It is music is audio pornography today. That's what it is. It's explicit, it's shameless, it's vulgar, it takes your sense of humanity away from you, it makes you look at women as objects, worse than objects, worse than animals. Just as and these people are talking about women like they're talking about, you know, uh, an animal really. And when you constantly, you know, listen to garbage like that, then you get deviated. And you don't find pleasure except in disobedience to a line. That's the sign of a sick heart. Oh yes, uh, and, and, and music is a whole another area uh, that uh, employs these techniques. Po uh, popular music, uh, all, all popular culture, movies, TV, music, they carry messages, uh, and it's not just entertainment. It, it, entertainment is not value free. It, it has ideological content. It presents a world view that influences the people who are watching or listening. So uh, we, we've kind of, we've got this disconnect thinking that entertainment is harmless when it's the most important uh, a delivery system of propaganda because it influences people without their conscious awareness and that's the ultimate in, in controlling people in society is to do it without them being aware of it. Now, you, you can't even listen to the lyrics because they're so disgusting, right? They are so filthy. And Fakhruddin al-Razi in his commentary says about the verse in the Quran where shaitan, you know, that you will try to seduce them with your voice, he says by giving them foul lyrics that their children will memorize and repeat. That's in Mufatih al-Ghayb. That was in the 13th century. So what are we doing now? This is the khutuwat of shaitan. He's taken people by degrees. 2.5 hours per day for teenagers in the United States listening to music. 2.5 hours per day. One in three popular songs now contain explicit references. The number of times an adolescent is exposed to explicit substance references, 35 per hour. They're listening to 2.5 hours a day, 35 per hour, 84 per day, 591 per week being told about uh, alcohol and drugs in these lyrics. These are the khutuwat of shaitan. 30,700 a year. References to drug or alcohol in songs. Pop, 9%. Rock, 14%. Hip-hop, R&B, hip-hop, 20%. Country, 36%. Rap, 77%. And we've got all these kids listening to rap. This is what they worship, these Satanists, uh, Baphomet. If you notice, he's androgynous, so it's a male-female mixture. Also making these signs. You see the signs he's making using this sign because 11 is the devil's number. Because 11 is one beside one. In their numerology, they use 11 a lot, and they like multiples of 11. 11, 22, 33. 66, they like these multiples. In their magic, they, they know the, the, the secrets of numbers, and so they use numbers. The, the Prophet ﷺ, when they used magic on him, they blew on 11 knots. Ihdashur uqda. And this is why the Mu'awidatayn has 11 ayahs, because it protects against their magic. So this is real stuff, people. I'm not making this up. This is real stuff. You can see Madonna imitating here Bofamed. Right, because she's one of them, and she's a numerologist. She is a numerologist. She practices numerology. Lady Gaga's got tens of millions of followers. So the devil has plenty of followers on Twitter. Now this man over here, LeVay, started the Church of Satan. He wrote a satanic Bible, 
And he explained that that symbol that they're all doing, that symbol, he said, was a curse symbol of, of devils. That's the way they put curses on people. And you've got people at rock concerts, they're all doing it, thinking it's cool. Marilyn Manson was a follower of Anton LaVey. He has tens of thousands of people go to his rock concerts. He has them openly denounce God, openly. He says, I want you all to reject God tonight. And they all do it. So this is real stuff, people. He's very committed to this. He takes it, he's a minister in the Church of Satan. And they use music because music is fitna. It's enticing. It sucks you in. You like it. It's enjoyable. Now, here's Miley with her little horn hair. Right? What is this? The, she had millions of followers of little kids in America. And this is what she turned into. And if you look, you see, where did she get that? Kali. A demon from the Hindu tradition of destruction because this is a destroyer of the innocence of youth. She, she has literally, she's possessed by Kali. And she couldn't stop putting her tongue out. She was even asked, why do you do that? She said, I just, I feel compelled to do it because this is, this is who's really moving things around, Kali, a demon. If you notice, they use also backwards, it's haram, to recite the Quran backwards. This is well known because in magic they recite things backwards. Alistair Crawley taught them to, to, to learn how to talk backwards. John Lennon actually knew how to speak backwards. There, there's recordings of him speaking backwards. And they do backmasking on their albums where they actually play things in reverse. Led Zeppelin, followers of Alistair Crawley did this on one of their albums. So you're getting literally uh, magical messages. I think that we all as artists because we're highly sensitive people. Mm -hmm. um, and this machine around us, this so-called music industry, is such a demonic uh, thing. Uh, it's, it sacrifices people's lives and, and their, their essences. The number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem for children in this industry. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh yeah. Not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh yeah. You're doing really well now, but didn't you release a CD like almost 10 years ago? Um, yeah, I mean I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so I kind of sang about, you know, what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Because I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out and so I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. I believe in Illuminati. There is a certain level that you get at that you can't go no further unless you're aware of certain things. And I, I, I'll leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? There's a certain level that you get at, to get to that there's a door that you have to walk through. And it's on you to walk through that door. And once you walk through that door, it's no problem. If, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, 
then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Like you're going to end up in a, on a one-way street and it's going nowhere. Like that's just the truth. I've seen, I've seen so many people like forsake their, their, their moral code and their value systems just for a little bit of fame. And it's, it's not worth it at the end of the day. It's really not worth it. I swear to Lucifer. I swear to Lucifer. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. Now you see in the West, People listen to music all the time. They have no, they're always plugged in. They get in their car, they turn on the music. They, they walk, they put in their, their earphones and they listen to their music and people have long playlists. They spend a lot of money on these things. And so they're lost. They don't have free time to think anymore because their lives are filled with sound. So the demons have immense tools that they've never had before. And they're using them very effectively. Musical instruments will be on their heads. How did he know about that? That's what it says. I didn't make that up. It says they'll have ma'azib ma'azib. On their heads are musical instruments. Who would have thought who would have known what that meant at the time of our Prophet? But now we see it, all these people everywhere. Your mind is filled with their thoughts. You're not even yourself anymore. You're, you're listening to Rihanna or, or, or Madonna or Haifa Wahbi or whoever the latest uh, fashionable singer is. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Allahumma ballah. Allahumma ballah. Allahumma ballah.